G'day guys, welcome back to Drone Sense. John here, Chief Instructor with FPV Australia, and on this episode I'd like to talk to you about how this thing actually flies. In previous episodes we've had a quick uh, discussion about what it is and sort of what's involved, what, what, what's, what's contained, but this time I'd like to talk to you about how it actually flies, and, and what I mean by that is not the fact that you just uh, press the battery, turn the battery on and, and hit the throttle and away we go. I'm talking about the science behind how this thing actually flies and what's happening to make it fly. What we won't do is we won't get into the, the full science down to the, the granular detail because I think that'll be just a bit over the top and I'll baffle you with science. Uh, instead, I'm going to talk to you about uh, what happens fundamentally so you can have a good understanding of, of how this thing works. So let's look at it. We know that this is the Phantom 4 and it's got four motors, four props and, and four ESCs. Well, let's look at a prop first. What is a propeller? You might have heard the term rotary wing aircraft before, and that's because basically this thing is a wing that rotates. Just like on a manned helicopter, they call it a rotary wing. It's because it spins around and around in a rotary fashion and it, and it works just like a wing. It is the reason that air is forced in a downward motion to make the aircraft fly. These are a fixed pitch, you might hear that term. Fixed pitch meaning that they don't, they don't change their pitch in flight. Unlike the Channel 7 chopper for instance, where the pilot can actually change the pitch of the blades above his head to get more lift or less lift, etc. They call that collective. Um, we don't have that ability to do, to do anything like that on these choppers, on these little uh, multi-rotors. So what we have to do is increase the speed at which this rotary wing spins to create more lift. So no, no cyclic pitch, we can't change the pitch in flight. They are connected to a brushless motor. What is a brushless motor? Well, with the advantages of post-production, let's have a look at a brushless motor. A brushless motor consists of an outer bell housing, and there are a couple of different types of brushless motors. There's a, an outrunner and an inrunner. In this case, we're looking at what's called an outrunner. Um, on, the, on the bell housing around the outside are a series of magnets. And the inside, you can see, is, uh, is a series of, of copper windings around a metal core. And if we go back to our high school days, what happens when we energize uh, our copper windings around a metal core, we create an electromagnet. And what actually happens is the ESC, another term you've heard, which sits inside this aircraft, the ESC, an electronic speed controller, converts the, the, the gets a signal from the flight, con the flight computer that says I need more power to, to the motors, for instance, and we'll get to that in a minute. And, uh, and what it does is it energizes those uh, electromagnets which then oppose the magnets on the bell housing. And of course, the only thing this can do if, we, uh, if we've got mo uh, magnets opposing is spin. And therefore, with the right timings and the right firings, again, I won't get into the granular detail of the science behind that, but the electronic speed controller fires across three different phases at the right moment at the right time to make this thing spin. And that's all it can do. There's no mechanical parts in here other than a bearing. And on that, really, really, really good piece of advice. Do not oil the bearings on your brushless motors. What you're gonna do if you do that is you're gonna attract dust and the dust will stick to the, to the oil and eventually too much dust builds up and you're gonna have all sorts of trouble. Most of the bearings in all of our machines are sealed anyway, so the oil's not gonna do anything but just gather a lot of dust and, and get a whole bunch of rubbish in there that you don't need. Another thing that I will comment though too is that as these motors are full of magnets, as you've just seen, they have the inherent ability to have little metal, little metal particles gather on this motor and sometimes get inside the motor. So, what do we recommend? First and foremost, compressed air. Blow the, the dust out of the motor with some compressed air. However, there's a little bit more to that as well. And again, we could, we could keep going granular down through all these sorts of stuff, but in a nutshell, be careful with what you use to blow compressed air. Some, some old compressors that you've got lying around, believe it or not, sitting in your garage, a lot of moisture builds up inside these compressors. So be careful. If you haven't got a water trap, and if those that have ever done any um, spray painting will know what a water trap is, a lot of moisture inside that compressor can come down the airline and you're blowing moisture into the motor. So just be aware of that. Um, look into that before you start blasting lots of air into your motors. But the way to clean them is with compressed air. Do not uh, do not um, oil them or anything like that. Just blow the dust out with compressed air. Cool. So there's the brushless motor. The ESC inside the, uh, inside the body here, the electronic speed controller, takes instructions from the flight computer and it fires the motors all at the right time to make this, these motors spin. But what happens when they're spinning? 
If you don't already know, these motors all have uh, a, a direction in which they spin. So we'll look at this particular setup here. This is the Phantom 4. This particular motor is gonna spin in an anti-clockwise direction, and this particular motor is gonna spin in a clockwise direction. And the thing is repeated at the back as well. This one is gonna spin in an anti-clockwise direction, and this one is gonna spin in a clockwise direction. And there is a very good reason why that happens. Newton's third law. Basically, if you don't remember what Newton's third law is, for every, to put it in plain English, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So when we give power to, say, this motor and we spin it clockwise, the equal and opposite reaction that this motor has in doing that puts a torque force onto the airframe. And what I mean by torque, not torque as in chatter, torque as in a force. And so it, it puts a force on the, on the airframe and the airframe wants to spin. And the only way we can counter that, well, when I say we, the aircraft, is to have a motor spinning in the opposite direction to counter the torque force being exerted on the airframe from this motor. So we offset that. We've got two now, that's great. We can fly a multi-rotor on two aircraft, but to make it a whole lot more stable and make life easy, we put another pair of motors, and they must be paired, so that we can offset each other again. And so we've now got opposing motors offsetting the torque on the airframe and we, we have what's called equilibrium. The flight, the flight computer then controls how much power goes to each motor for the thing to, to, to stay hovering. It's hovering because again, thanks to Newton's third law, as the air is being forced out of the motors and pushed down in a downward motion, the equal and opposite reaction is the aircraft goes up. It climbs itself up through the airspace, basically creating thrust. And that's great, we've got, uh, we've got a machine that's hovering. And now, I guess, if you, want to, uh, if you want to push this aircraft forward, all you do on the stick is you give some forward, what we call forward pitch, and the aircraft flies forward. But what actually happens? Well, very simply, the, uh, the front two motors will slightly slow down, the back two motors will slightly speed up, the aircraft tilts forward, and the thrust vector, thanks to Newton again, says that the aircraft is pushed that way. That's it in plain English. We could go on about the whole science behind the air flowing over these, over these propellers and what, and you know what? We'll, we could sit here for a long time and discuss all that, but for the all wants and purposes of this little episode, let's try and keep it a little bit simple. So same as uh, if you want to fly sideways, the aircraft, these two motors are going to slow down a little bit. These two will speed up a little bit. Now the flight computer does all this for you. You don't. You just tell it on the stick, hey, I want it to go left, and the aircraft will go left or it'll go right, depending on what you tell it based on how the aircraft tilts. And that's called the aircraft's attitude. A lot of people used to get confused in the early days when we used to come up with things like attitude mode. They thinking that someone had made a mistake and they should be called altitude mode. No, nope. it is the attitude of the aircraft that is controlled and now no longer holding GPS. So when you hear the little voice in the computer of a DJI product say, Addy mode, what it's actually saying is the aircraft will return to a level attitude, but it's not gonna hold its position on the earth anymore using GPS. You've disabled the GPS or it's lost GPS. And now it's gonna fly in a returned level attitude, pretty much, right? So that's sort of the science behind uh, how this thing flies. It's, it's all based on these motors putting a torque force back onto the airframe and that's why we have them paired and we have them spinning in opposite directions. Now they don't have to spin, just on a side note, in the direction that DJI have them. DJI have this one spinning anti-clockwise and this one spinning clockwise. You could, in effect, if you, uh, if you do the modifications yourself, you could reverse that and this one could spin anti-clockwise if you wanted to, as long as there are two opposing sets of motors opposing the, the torque force from the other two. That's sort of it in a nutshell. If you want to yaw the aircraft, if the aircraft's flying, you know, and you want it to turn in, in this motion, we call this yaw, uh, or, and rotate the aircraft around, then again, simply, opposing cornered motors either speed up or slow down so that one set of motors is putting more torque force onto the airframe and one set of motors is putting less and the result, thanks to Newton, is that the aircraft spins. Um, it's the same principle, if you want to think about it, as if you took the tail rotor off the Channel 7 helicopter, the aircraft spins around because of the torque force being generated back on the airframe from the from the motors and everything spinning up the props and all that sort of stuff. There's a whole lot of science in it and we won't go into that details, but yes, before you jump on the, uh, on the wagon, there are helicopters that don't have a tail rotor called a NOTAR. And they, uh, they still have a force at the tail of the aircraft 
uh, holding the tail and it uses it uses airflow rather than a spinning tail rotor. But the same principle is there. Without that, the, the thing goes around and around and around. The Chinook, for example, uh, is, a, is a military helicopter that has two rotors above your head and they are the same as these two. They offset the torque force uh, from each other and therefore the aircraft doesn't spin out of control. So there you go. That's pretty much how these aircrafts fly in a nutshell. From there, we can go up in pairs. We can make it six rotors, hexacopters, such as the G DJI M600. It has six rotors. The principle is exactly the same. We have to have paired motors offsetting the same, uh, the torque from each other to get equilibrium. Yes, again, before you jump, there is a tricopter. How does that work, John? Well, it works by tilting the mechanism on the rear rotor. When we used to build our tricopters, we would have two at the front and one at the back, but the one at the back tilted and that that tilt was used to offset the torque coming from the front motors. So it still has a, a, a way of doing that. Um, a Y6 is the same principle as the quads and the, and the hexacopters that are flat, only there's two motors up. Uh, each, each corner has a motor up and a motor down, but uh, it's the same thing, you're all paired. Then we can go to eight, we can go to 12. You could theoretically go to any even number of motors as long as the torque force is equally offset. It'll, it'll fly, theoretically. Um, and there's, uh, there's sort of no real difference between flat and, uh, and X. So for instance, when I say X, um, the M600 is a, is a, well, let's look at the S1000. The DJI S1000 is an octocopter, flat eight. However, there are an X8, and that's where you've got two motors in each corner, one points up, one points down. Um, there, is some, there is a whole lot of discussion around uh, redundancies and weight distribution and all sorts of stuff and what flies better, or whether it's a flat eight or an X8, you know, I'm, I'm not going to here to argue that. They all fly. Uh, that's how they fly in a nutshell. Um, a couple of things I'll mention. Uh, if you are custom building your own drone and you're not thinking about, you know, I'm just going to go out and buy a DJI product, you're going to custom build your own drone. Um, there is a uh, somewhat of a, a dark art of getting the right motor that has the right windings and the right power output and can handle the right amount of amperage, combined with the right electronic speed controller so it doesn't cook itself, combined with the right size prop so all that lines up. And there are some online calculators and stuff that are there to help you and do that. Over the years, and I've been building drone, custom drones now for nearly 12 years commercially, um, nothing beats fair income real world testing. So if you're thinking about building a custom drone and you've, and you've got your ideas on, on what size motors and what size props and all that, you will have to test it. And when I mean test it, you, you know, get yourself a way of, of seeing how much current is being drawn out of one motor. And uh, we, we had drones where you could swap just a single prop size, go from a nine inch prop to a 10 inch prop and basically cook everything in a heartbeat because it was that close to the limits of what the electronics were capable of doing on that size prop. Um, I've cooked so many motors in my time and, and ESCs, are, oh, I've lost count. And that's half the fun, you know, that's half the experiment. So look, I hope that's given you some indication into the science of how this thing actually flies. I didn't want to go into too much detail and baffle you with all the tech behind it, but uh, it gives you a fairly good idea of how the, how the air is moving and what it does. And it, and it has some byproducts, and we'll talk about them in a future episode where I will talk about uh, what affects uh, that has when the air is rushing out of this and, 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 and how the aircraft can actually fall out of the sky and, and stall. Believe it or not, you can stall this aircraft. Uh, DJI went to, went to lengths to change some of their firmware so that the aircraft, um, you, you can't forcibly put it into a stall like we used to and it's called a vortex ring state. You can Google that if you like and have a look before the next episode and I'll talk a bit more about it in the next one. Um, where these, these aircraft, early DJI product, used to vortex ring state quite badly. Now, thanks to the firmware's uh, maximum descent rate, um, under normal atmospheric conditions, they won't vortex ring. But uh, you can still stall these aircraft. And yes, you can stall a multi-rotor aircraft, just like you can stall a fixed wing aircraft. Um, I'll talk about how fixed wings fly in another episode. They fly uh, on a slightly different principle. Um, it's still all about air though. Air is the most common denominator. Um, but that's it in a nutshell for how these things fly. If you've got any questions or I didn't cover anything in this particular topic that you'd like to know about, you know, how, how this all works and, and how it's all put together and something I've missed, please feel free to email me. You can get me directly at john at fpvaustralia.com.au. You can call our office 026 Find us on the website 
fpvaustralia.com.au. There's also, if you're watching this uh, you, on YouTube, there is a Facebook page, page dedicated to DroneSense. Just go look up DroneSense on Facebook, FPV Australia's DroneSense, you'll find us there. Uh, and hit the subscribe button. We'll be putting videos up and, uh, and you'll get notification of that. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Again, as I always say, if you are flying a drone today, tomorrow, next week or next month, please do so safely and responsibly. We need safe skies for all. Enjoy. Thank <laughs> you.